I grew up right here on this ranch where we're doing this filming. And my grandfather was a horse trader and he bought and sold horses and my sister and I and my dad, and we would, uh, the ones that, that uh, needed some work and needed ridden, we'd do that. So I started out right here and I mean right in this swamp, we used to ride out through here and have fun and we'd run through this water here with our horses. And, and I started riding colts probably when I was 13, 14 years old. I started my first one and right here where we're at on this ranch. And then uh, I got to working for different ranches and I always rode colts for the public. After my rodeo career kind of quit, I went to a rodeo announcing school. And Bob Tallman and Bob Feist and I, I really think those guys helped me with this career because so many horsemen have a hard time talking about what they want to do. And with the rodeo announcing and the auctioneering, it's real easy to convey my thoughts from what I'm doing to, to the public. And I think that's a, um, most good horsemen don't like to talk about what they're doing. They don't know how to talk about what they're doing. So the, the uh, kind of the public broadcasting background has been real helpful for me. I'm a little bit of a loner, so I, I don't mind getting off by myself and thinking. And I think so many times we've got so many things coming at us in our lives, and we're so influenced by so many different things that we never get to have our own thoughts, our own reactions, and we never learn from what we've done. So I take a lot of time to think about what I'm doing and what I've done. And I also like to observe other people what they're doing and try to tweak it where see what they're doing that's real good and take the things that aren't working too good and try to figure out what would make that better and I think that's what's really changed my horsemanship a lot and then the next step that really really helped me and changed me is I went to a stockmanship school and I learned how to handle cattle a little different and I really learned the principles of livestock handling and that just changed my horsemanship so much and there's three or four things, two things, two main things that came out of that. One is the, the horse or the cow or the human can have one main thought at a time. The second thing in there is animals want to be straight. And that's where I got to not wanting to bend my horses so much, which is quite different than everybody else. After that, I just, uh, I use those principles and really have tried to change myself. And I really think it's important that we try to keep the stress off our horses to achieve high performance. Howdy, my name's Kurt Pate from Helena, Montana, and it's a real privilege and an honor to be able to present this colt starting video on behalf of the American Quarter Horse Association. I don't take this lightly. I think it's a real serious business, colt starting, and uh, I think in the last few years maybe it's been taken down a notch in how much importance it plays. The first 30 to 60 days of a colt's life working with the human creates, I think, so much of the horse in the future, whether it be a world champion or not, could be the first ride. I'm not sure how much importance that plays, but I know it plays quite a role. So when we get ready to start working with the horse, we want to make sure our attitude's right, we want to know our skills are right, and we want to be honest with ourselves knowing that uh, we, can, we should really be doing this job. If not, leave it to a professional. When we get ready to start this colt, I think we need to talk about a few things before we get underway. First thing is, is we have, I like to start with a 50 foot round pin, 50 to 60 foot. And the round pin is real important that the footing is good. Less than 50 and the horse has trouble going. Bigger than 60 and the cowboy or the person starting the colt has trouble keeping up. I also like to have my round pin, we have a wagon wheel design here, all the pins are connected to the round pin. It just makes it where you can use it for more things. We use our pins for livestock, cattle, and horses. So the round pin, a good, safe, closed round pin is real important with good footing. Uh, the next thing is, is our horse. You'll notice as we get to work on this horse, he's not cleaned up, he's not trimmed up, he's not shined up. And that's for a purpose. Sometimes when we get our horse too prepped and too ready, we will 
create some resistance in there. So, some people will even twitch a horse before they would start him to get him a bridle path cut or his nose trimmed or whatever. And I think that is the wrong approach to take. I'm not against trimming a horse up and making him look pretty, but I want to make sure it doesn't have any effect on my training or starting of the colt uh, on those first sessions. And that brings us to the importance of colt starting. I think the first 30 to 60 days in a horse's life just like some of the books say about a child's education, kindergarten through third grade is probably the most important grades where the horse or the child learns to learn. Well, we want the horse to do the same thing. He is learning to learn through the colt starting process. And I think that uh, that importance of that colt starting process has been lessened some in the past by the, the, the style of horsemanship we're using where we get the horse real gentle and real dull sometimes. So people without the skills it takes to start a colt can actually get the work done. And then the colt and the performance of the horse suffers later on down the line. All right, as we get started here, we'll call this low stress colt starting. And what I want this horse to do is at any point of the time, I want him to feel real comfortable with me. Like this horse just came into the scene and he wanted to be with me. He decided that he needed to be with me because I'm a, I'm a good place for him to be. The thing I don't want to do through my colt starting or getting him ready to ride or perform, I don't want to undo this unnecessarily. I don't want to scare him or get him afraid of me in any of the things that I do here. So whatever I'm doing, I'm going to try to do it where the horse wants to be with me rather than has to be with me and does things not out of fear, but out of understanding that's what I'm asking him to do through my presence or the pressure that I put on him. So basically what I'm trying to do is get this horse to accept my pressure, whether it be physical or, or a draw or whatever I'm doing, I want him to understand what I'm doing in a way that he learns to accept pressure and every time we do something he learns to do something from that. And that's how we progress real quickly and rapidly with the horse. As I get ready to catch a horse, the first thing I want to do is make sure I'm organized. My halter ropes over my arm here. I got my halter untied. It's, well, I've thought ahead, it's organized. So when I get to the horse, I don't have to fumble around here and I don't have to take my mind off the horse. So this is real important having your halter set up right. All right, now as I approach the horse, I wanna, I'm gonna try to keep his front feet solid when I go to catch here. He looks like he's ready to catch. His front feet are set in the ground and I'll just, I'll just reach out and touch him. Try not to drive him away. And when I'm ready to catch him, I'll come right in here close, put my arm over and the organized halter, it's easy to grab. And I'll try to put this halter on nice and smooth. It's real important to get it tied properly as well. So it goes down through the hole. And I like this halter to come up, fit up behind the jaw, just like this one. It fits real good where the contact is in the proper place up behind the jaw. And we're gonna tie this halter. We get it nice and snug. We'll take the end of the halter and go towards the eye. That'll form a loop out behind. Then you come back and you go back towards the withers in that eye, in the uh, eye of the uh, halter. Make sure we can see everything here. What this does, if something happens and this horse would, if the halter would get too tight, with it, tying it this way, if it gets real tight, all you have to do is push your thumb there and you can always untie it. So that's the proper way to tie one of these rope halters. I like to just tuck this, this in there. So if you don't do that, this can flop around, hit him right in the eye. So it's just real polite and kind to just throw that in there and just tuck it down in there. So that's the way I like my halter to fit and set. Once I get the halter on, I'll, I'll just make sure he's, he's calm and relaxed and I'll just go to petting on him a little bit, making sure he's okay. I'll pet him in a way that he likes to be petted. I won't pat him, I won't do this and reach out and pat him real hard. I'll rub him with his hair. Make sure he enjoys that. You can see his ears go forward. He's looking at something out there. I'm not bothering him with this. If I pet him wrong, you'll see the attitude he gets. He'll get cranky about it. He won't like that. And, and that's, a, that's kind of a rude way to pet your horse or, and it's doing things that the horse doesn't really like. I use very little equipment with my colt starting. I talked about the round pen. I use a halter with a nice lead rope. Nothing fancy, I like a rope halter. It doesn't really matter what kind of a halter. The main thing I like about the halter is, is I want it to fit properly. Fit properly on the nose where he has room enough to move his mouth 
where it, it comes down, but this is real important here, where the rope comes in, the, the top part of the halter comes in behind his jaw. And what this does, it, it tells the horse, every time I pick up, it contacts him behind the jaw here, and then responds to him there. So he has time to get ready to respond to the halter. That's a real important thing. A good fitting halter, to me, is very, very important to the responsiveness and the softness of your horse. Everybody thinks about this part of the halter being where you get the response. But I also think it's in behind here where he leads forward like this. If I asked him to come forward, the way that halter contacts is real important to the horse. And then I just have a standard saddle, saddle blanket, uh, with as little other stuff as I possibly can use. I'll use a lariat rope quite a little bit. Okay, now when I catch a horse, I will, I will try to... I'll try to get him soft in the jaw, I'll call it. Now I want to be able to bring his head to me here and just get him to twist there just a little bit and then be able to push the halter away and just get the horse's head to give right behind his ears or at the pole. I'll just get him to flex there. I'll try to get him to put his head down just a little, just softly put his head down and be able to pick his head up. I want his head to be real soft and flexible here. That's the start of all his athletic maneuvers, right at his jaw, the atlas or the axis as they call it. That and shifting his weight back and forth is what's going to create a well-balanced, high-performance horse. Okay, when I get that, that all feels real good with him. Now we'll just start working on some groundwork. And my groundwork might be a little different than you've seen, and it's a lot different than it used to be. But the groundwork to me is, it can be real stressful to a horse. And what we do, if we, if we put ourselves in a position, we'll ask him to go, but as soon as he go, he has to either bend or turn and stop. And if we do this too much, the horse decides he doesn't want to move out. He doesn't want to go anywhere. Now, when I go to lead him off, I'm going to take a hold of my halter, but I'm not going to hold tight. When I hold on to my halter and I'm going to lead a horse, my hand stays loose. And you'll, you'll be able to see when I walk off, he might not be ready to go with me. I'll slip just a little bit of rope and then tighten it up, giving him enough time to get ready to come with me. That's a real important thing to remember. When I want him to stop, I'm going to give him plenty of time to know that he should stop. I'll just lift my hand and block. When I get him stopped, the next thing I want to do is I'll put my hand in a position on the halter rope so I can step his feet back and square him up. Good. And I want him to just get real comfortable where he understands when I stop him, I want him to get in a relaxed position where he is balanced to go anywhere from that. And the first thing I do when I stop a horse, I try to get him to turn loose and relax. Just, this is his place to be a horse, where he can just cool down, maybe even cock a foot, get in a relaxed state. Again, I'll ask him to move off very softly. I'll slip a little rope, say, come on, come with me. But I'm giving him time to make up his mind. Let me show you what happens when you don't do that. I'll stop him, square him up. There, he squared up pretty good that time. Now, if I leave without asking him, you, you see there, it begins to be a resistance in there, but it's because my hand was too stiff here. When I want him to go, I'll slip maybe just three inches of rope, six inches, a foot, and then he learns to lead forward real good. So when I uh, work on the ground, I'll try to work from in front of the horse, and I'll try to uh, ask him to move a certain foot. So here, I want him to move his left front foot first. So here, I'll just bring his head across and, and just ask him to go. And I'll, I'll do a lot of this here. I'll walk backwards, and I'll watch his feet. And when I want him to stop, I'll just simply lift my hands up and stop his front feet just by elevating my hand. I'm not lifting his chin, I'm just elevating my hand. That's kind of blocking him, and, it, and he raises his chin a little bit, and it stops his front feet. Now this time I'm gonna ask him to leave with his right front foot first. So here I'm just gonna bring his head to the left, put the weight on his left front, and just ask that right front foot to come forward. When I'm walking out in front of him here, what I try to do Thinking about when I'm on his back, what I'm going to try to do, you can maybe see it here. I'll ask his head to come to the left just a little bit. Then I'll ask his head to come to the right just a little bit. And not bend too much when he comes around these turns. Because a horse doesn't naturally, out in the pasture, he doesn't naturally bend too much. Again, I'll just elevate my hands and we'll stop him. And now I'll just go to square his feet up. So I'll have to put that left foot back. Step it back just a little more. Good. And if this way, the action of your hand on the halter rope or the action of the halter causes the signal to go from here right down to his front feet. 
And when his front feet understand, the rest of the horse has to follow. And now he's real good. This horse is real gentle, real calm, and the previous handling he's had has been pretty quality, so this stuff is easy for him. I'm gonna start working and getting him ready for the saddle. I like to use my hand first, rather than a sack or a flag or some of the things I used to use. I, I could start out with my rope first, my lariat rope, but it doesn't have as much feel as my hand. And the hand, when I reach out and touch a horse, you can see here, if I put my hand on the horse, you see he quivers his hide just a little bit. If I, if I had something that didn't have some feel, I might put too much pressure or not off, but with my hand, as soon as he relaxes and feels good, I can relax my hand and take it away. It's like when you shake somebody's hand. If they're a little bit rigid or abrupt, you can hold onto that hand and, and, until they relax and let go, and you might make a business deal that way. That might be the ceiling of the deal. Right here, now this time when I touch him, he didn't quiver his hide. He didn't quiver, so I could just pet him then. But if he was quivering and didn't like me, my hand would do something to get that response changed. And those little things make a big difference in your horsemanship. Okay, I'll reach back again, and I'm just gonna groom where the saddle goes. That's all I'm thinking about. I'm on the left side. I'm a, he's got a little line down his back, a line back. I'll stay everything on his left side at first. Now when I go down in the girth area, this is gonna simulate the cinch. And I'll, I'll, I'll get him used to that. That's a real important thing, getting him used to the cinch. And the way he feels when I let go, see right there, he's moving, I don't wanna let go if I can help it. I'll wait till he gets still, then I'll take my hand away. Trying to get him prepared for the saddle. I'll rub him on the right side, then I'll move back to the left side. Make sure he can take that from one side to the other. That's real important. Come from this side, go to that side. Just like that saddle is gonna do. It's gonna touch him over here, touch him here, touch him both sides. So we're trying to simulate what the saddle does with our hands. When we go to the right side, we put the halter rope over our right hand. I do. I'll leave it laying on the ground. When I start out here and I'll just start working my way back, my right hand, when I'm on the right side, goes onto the withers there. My right hand is telling me what he's doing up in the front. My left hand is grooming the horse. He looks fine. Now, if he was afraid, or if he was responding to this where he tensed his hide up or shook a little bit or tried to move away from me, I would know it'd be time to stay here. And it might take 30 minutes, 30 days, or three months, I don't know. It depends on how wild the horse is. But this horse isn't because of his previous handling, his previous environment. So there's no use staying here and doing too much. He's ready to go on. And I like to, here's the place I like to groom my horse. When I'm getting him ready, now I'm getting him ready for maybe a, a snaffle bit later on. I can kind of groom him here a little bit and just clean him up slightly. And while I'm doing it, I'm also preparing him to put a bridle on him or to do some other things. So I can rub in his eyes, but if it was bothering him, I'd back off, but he doesn't seem to mind it at all. And, and your hand is a wonderful grooming aid. Good, now I'll get my rope. The lariat rope can be a real good thing or a real bad thing. So many times I see people, when they're using the lariat, they're thinking more about the lariat or the rope than they are about their horse. And the reason that is is because they don't understand how to use the rope, so they have to put too much of their mind on the rope. And then they miss all the, the good releases or the reaction to the horse, they miss them because they're thinking about their rope. And that brings us to a point. The human can have one main thought at a time and the horse can have one main thought at a time. So if I'm trying to use equipment that I don't understand or don't, I'm not familiar with, I'm gonna be thinking more about it than I am about the horse. So I really gotta to try to remember that. I use a rope a lot. I've been using a rope for a long time and I keep practicing with it. So if you're not familiar with a rope, you might use your lunge line or, or an extension cord, I've heard it said, whatever. And you don't have to go out and buy a big expensive rope. But if you have roped and you're kind of handy where, where you know how to coil things up and you don't have to rope anything with this thing, it's simply, it's light, it can be small, it can be big, it can be long, it can be short. The nice thing about a rope is it's so easy to handle and light and it's all we're trying to do is prepare the horse for the saddle with the rope. So when I get started here, when I go, want to go on the right side, I'm going to position the horse. I'll, I'll square his feet up. Again, I'll step him back. And every time I do this, I'm getting him lighter on the halter rope. 
And now I'll, I'll get my halter in a position. And if he was real wild, if he was a horse that was real sensitive that couldn't hardly take my hand touching him, here's what I'd do. Like a, a, a horse that hadn't been, like a horse that uh, just come out of the pasture and hadn't ever been touched till he was two or three years old. That kind of horse would be a lot more sensitive than this one. And if, if you just reached out and touched him with this rope, he might jump and kick the rope and miss and hit you. So for me, when I'm getting a horse ready for the rope, sometimes I'll put my hand here. He's used to my hand and I'll put my rope on my hand and, and simply move my hand out from under the rope and let the rope touch him there. You notice my position is in front of the shoulder when I'm doing this. I'm staying up here where I can keep his feet stopped while he's getting used, used to the rope. I try to be very smooth with the rope where I'm not slapping him or banging him with it and making him move his feet. I want him to learn to stay. I'll rub him with the rope where the saddle's gonna go. If it starts to bother him, I'll just slow my rope down. I don't take my, ro I don't take my rope away like this. I just slow my rope down and bring it back to the position where he can understand where it's not gonna hurt him. And then I just start again. I'll just start working at it again, back and forth. Once that is good, I'll move him. I'll switch my hand on my rope to my right hand. I'll move his position, square him up, try to keep him from stepping on my halter rope. Square him up. And when he's ready to stand, I'll proceed. Now this time I don't have to put my hand on the rope. He should understand that. I'll just reach out and touch him with the rope real soft up near the withers and then I'll just start working back. And this is just like a cinch coming in here. I'll get him used to this cinch just by rubbing him with my lariat rope. And I'll bring it back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and when he feels good there, I'll kind of watch his attitude, make sure he's not cranky about the rope. Here's an important part here. I'll put my hand on the withers block with my elbow, and I'll gently move this rope to the other side. What this does, your hand, if he was to get spooked, when he sees that rope from his right eye and me on his left side, it could cause him to jump sideways. With my hand up here on his withers, I'll be able to block and push off and not get knocked down. And I can soothe the horse if he gets a little bit afraid. And I'll just, if he wants to move a little bit, I'll just go with him. When he stops, I stop. And that's a good place to let him think of, when I stopped, I got relief from that pressure. Now, you can use a lariat rope, but you have to be real careful, careful with it. First of all, this is what they call a triple X soft. It's a nylon rope that's real soft, has a rawhide Honda that really releases quickly. The reason I like the soft rope, it's not as stiff and doesn't hit him as hard when you put it up against him. And it, this, this is frayed just enough where it won't burn the horse. And if he was to get it around his leg or something, it wouldn't cause a rope burn. That's real important. Now what the rope is doing, what we're trying to do here with the rope, is we're trying to teach the horse to accept the pressure of the saddle. When we put the saddle on, it's going to be touching him on both sides, which is something he hasn't had happen before, unless he's been blanketed. And I don't think this guy has. It'll be touching him on the right side and the left side at one time and, and switching back and forth. His mind will have to keep track of things on each side. The girth is gonna go clear around his belly and it's gonna to have to tighten up so that saddle can't roll underneath him. And boy, that's really a lot of pressure for a horse that is real sensitive. So all I'm trying to do with my rope and my hands and all the things I'm doing here is trying to get this horse to learn to accept that pressure a little bit at a time. If we just put the saddle on and cinch it up, he's gonna to have to try to get rid of that pressure. And he might hurt himself or hurt me or it might cause some problems down the road. So we're just trying to, with our getting him prepared to saddle, I'm trying to get him to understand how to get things on the left side, the right side, on one side, then the other, then that girth all the way around his belly. And then have it follow with him and travel with him. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do with my rope. And he's again, real good about that. It doesn't bother him here, 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 anywhere. I can put it up above him and bring him back down. It doesn't seem to concern him too much. Now I'll wait till his attitude, again, I'll just try to watch those ears. I can do things like this. Rub him up here, scratch him here. Again, I can, he made it. I'll see if this ear will come forward. We'll just wait for a moment. For that other ear to go forward, I'll kick something out in front of him. There, and now I'll take it off. Okay, now, here comes the, uh, this is probably the best thing that the rope is for. But this is kind of a dangerous thing as well, and I don't know how you get around that danger. You could, if you didn't want to put a loop in your rope, you could do this right here. 
you could just take the end of your rope or your extension cord if that's what you're using. You could throw that right up over the horse. You could even use just a halter rope for this. And now, once he gets still, I'll wait till he gets still, and I'll just, just like I'm reaching for a cinch, I'll just reach in there and see now that, he's a little bit sensitive to that. And I'll just let him learn to wear that. So I'd go on the right side first or the left side, either way, and let him get used to that rope around where the cinch is going to go. And he's just moving around me, and that's okay. If he got to doing too much, if it was too much for him, what I could do is just let the rope go off and let him wear it. And you see that just caused him to stop there. You, can even, you could even do this right here, just so he's, he's starting to understand the feel of that saddle being cinched. As he goes around here, I'll just let him wear that. He needs to go when he's saddled, so this is a real good feel here for him. This is a good way for him to learn about the cinch without having that total pressure. I want to make sure my position, I stay up in front so I can keep straightening his head out, which makes it harder for him to go. Now we'll just pull that up again. We'll let him get prepared for it and ready for it. I can straighten his head out, let him go out around me. And I'll try to get him to stop this time with the pressure on, because that's how the saddle, he's going to have to learn to take this and get his feet still when the saddle is on. Good. Okay, now that's a good way to start that. But the way I like to start it with my lariat rope is I'll build a loop. And you'll notice this has a, a, a rawhide Honda on it, which is a little bit heavier than your normal Honda, which will make it release quicker. I'll build a loop here. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get my horse ready for the saddle going on him just by touching him with this rope here. And you can see that causes a little reaction. But I'll, I'll throw it on and just let him learn to wear that. If that caused a big reaction, I'd take it back off, on and off at first. This is just like throwing your saddle over his back. Again, I'll just throw this on like I was gonna throw a saddle on. You see that come down around his legs and scared him a little bit. And now I'll just, I'm gonna go with him. This is kind of like a, 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 a travel boy dragging around behind his legs. He gets used to things back behind his withers. He's touching his right leg, then his left, and vice versa. Now I'm out in front of him. If he gets afraid, I'm out here to help him but I'm keeping his head to my side so I don't get run over if he does get afraid. And that doesn't seem to be bothering him. It's touching his hind legs. Everything is kind of touching him all over. He's having no reaction to it. We'll stop him here. And you see, right, when that, something like that happens, by being out in front, I can help him to keep from being afraid. And I didn't get run over so, because I could have his head going out to the side. Now we'll just let him step through that rope. I'll just let him back. There, now it's around his girth. And I'll just, I'm gonna let it, I'm just gonna let him carry it loose for a moment. We'll just let him learn to live with that. And now I'll just very slowly act like I'm gonna cinch him up here. And I'll just put that around his girth. And the nice thing about this is we'll just let him wear how much he can accept. As soon as it gets to be too much, or as soon as I think he's in a good attitude, I can just release that rope just like that. The weight of the Honda, it's put on in a certain way. Now the way I put this rope on, again, it's real important to remember this, so it releases quickly. The Honda is always up. Whatever side I'm on, the Honda's up, and when I'm on a release, the weight of the Honda takes the pressure away. Pressure, release. And this is how the horse learns to accept the cinch, a little bit at a time. We can step back here in the back. We'll get him used to a back cinch. He might kick up at that a little bit or something. He, but this is where the back cinch would go, and we'll just let him get used to that a little bit at a time. And I'll let him walk with it. I'll get him to walk in straight. I want to make sure he doesn't always come right around me. I want him to be able to go straight out by me. So many times when we do groundwork, we forget and the horse just makes these little circles, and then when we get on his back, he can't walk out and move out. So here we'll put this rope on, we'll ask him to go, and I want him to go straight on by, and then let him come on around me. I can be out quite a distance here with this rope. I got 60 feet to be out in front of him, so I can get out of his way. I can use a lot of, lot of room. Now we can just very gently take it off, let it come down. Walk him out of it. 
Good. Now I'll just let him get still and there should be little breaks in the action here where he learns that he gets to, everything can just be calm here. I'll square him up. And I think he's ready to saddle. As we get ready to saddle the horse, this is going to be our report card on how well we did in pre preparing the horse for the saddling process. Now all the preparation in the world sometimes doesn't work. You can do everything just perfect and just right. And still, when you put that saddle on and snug that girth up, something happens to the horse and uh, he has to react to that pressure. So we always want to be careful not to get in a position where we can get kicked or run over or knocked down. And uh, we always want to be in a position where we can help the horse overcome his fears if we can be there at all. So we'll think about that as we're getting ready to saddle him. The saddle pad, it's a nice start. It's light, it's a little bit bigger than my rope. It's a little bit more for him to take at times. So I'll, I'll walk in here and this'll be a pretty good way to see how he's gonna react to the saddle. I'll make sure he's gonna keep his feet still and I'll just, I'll just flop that pad on like I've been putting it on for all his life. I'm in front of his shoulder. I'll let it slip off, come back on. He feels pretty good there. Doesn't feel like he's wanting to walk forward. I'll let it go to this side, bring it back. He's real good at the pad. Now I could stay here and do this a long time, but I'd be wasting my time and, and getting him bored. I'll switch sides and I'll just bring it on from this side. Same thing, and I can put my hand through here and hold here to keep him with me, just to help him to stay. And this is just, I call this my supporting hand here that has my halter rope. I'm kind of hugging him here so, so he's not so scared about things coming up and down on his back. Okay, he looks real good with the saddle pad. Now a lot of times the horse will change from the pad to the saddle. So we never take anything for granted, even though I'm pretty sure that this colt is gonna be good to saddle, I'm not gonna take any chances because I wanna be doing this for a long time and I don't wanna get myself hurt or my horse hurt. Now you notice before I put my saddle on, I'll saddle him from both sides. My saddle, the cinch is hanging up here where this won't fall down and flop onto him and hurt him. My stirrups, I have pretty long legs so it's hard to get this, this saddle over. I'll leave my latigo laying over the top and when I put my saddle, when I get ready to saddle him, I put my saddle right over my hip like this. I have one hand free here to get my horse ready to make sure my pad is right. My hip is holding onto my saddle on this side and this on my cantle, it'll just, it makes it real easy to pack and be mobile with my saddle. When I step in here, I'm gonna step right into his eye, to his shoulder. I'll make sure his feet are square like he's thinking about staying. Square him up a little bit. Get my pad right. When I throw this saddle on, I wanna be real smooth. I'm just gonna simply roll and go. And I was a little bit late there, but I'll just catch him and I'll just get him to stand still. I'll just catch my saddle, catch him. I try to still set it down soft and, and that was all right. It wasn't perfect, but it was all right. Now I'll bring him forward and we'll, I'll, I'll show you the way I, this is how I usually saddle from this side. We'll just pull this saddle off. That doesn't hurt a thing. Put it on and take it off. But I like to saddle from the right side. This is my favorite side to saddle from. I'm blocking the horse's view. I can hold my saddle in this position. This, my my uh, stirrup is under my arm and I can, I can just lay my hand against the horse's neck here to help support him, to keep him with me. I'll make sure he's kind of thinking about staying. My hand goes here onto the top of my saddle. I'll simply roll my saddle up. And again, he walks off and I just go with it. I'll just let him walk and I'll just pick up on my halter rope and get him to stop. It doesn't bother me that he wants to walk off. Matter of fact, sometimes it's a good thing with a horse that's as gentle as this, when he wants to walk off, it means that when you get on him, you probably won't have too much trouble getting him to go. Now I'll go ahead and just move him around a little bit. It doesn't hurt to move the horse with the saddle unsensed if he can take it. He'll just learn how to carry it a little bit more. But you notice when I move him, I have my hand on the saddle horn. So if he does get scared and take off, I can keep the saddle on him, or if it's gonna come off anyway, I'm gonna pull it off forward and to me. If you ever have the horse run out from under the saddle, if he spooks and goes that way and your saddle ends up back behind you, I have found that it's really hard, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get the horse over that. And it's just a mistake that I've made, that I've learned from, 
where you don't want that to fall off behind. Boy, that really spooks a horse. And then every time you go to put that saddle up, he's thinking about going forward. And you have to do a lot of things to get him over that. I'll step across here. Now here I'll, I'll come in and I'll get everything organized over here. I have my, my arm on his, my left arm is up on his neck. To keep him from, he's wanting to nip a little bit. Just things he doesn't understand. He's just trying to kind of take care of. So I'm, I'm putting my arm here. My right hand is gonna do all the work. My left hand is gonna support, and he's gonna tell me what the horse is doing, and it's gonna help the horse if, he, if he, he has to move. See, I'll keep him from nipping there. Now, I used to reach with my left hand to get the cinch, but here I think my hand, left hand does a lot more keeping him from biting me or moving off. I'll watch as I reach and find my cinch, which I'll stop him with my left hand if I can. I'll just keep working at it. Get him where he can stand still. I'll just keep working. And I'm not, I'm not gonna panic here, I'm just gonna, I'll just work it out where I'll position myself where he can learn to accept this. And I'm just trying to hold my saddle on without having it fall off. I'll let him walk just for a moment. I'll bring him around and here, I'll ask him to stand still. Good, my hand up here is doing this. And he just needed a little time to move out. If I had stopped that, that energy would have been pent up in there. So I'll just keep working here. And I'll, I'll try to keep my left hand on him and work my latigo. And now I'll step on my halter rope again. I'll work it down where I got a, a hold of it. And I'll work my left hand. I'm just gonna hold, hold with my left hand. Keep my saddle from falling off. I'll straighten him out. And I'll just work my latigo up here. And I'll let him move just a little bit. While he's moving, I'll start getting my girt, my cinch, my latigo wrapped around my cinch. If he wants to move a little bit, it's okay. And I'll just go with him here. I can't stop him, so I'll just go with him. I'll let him stop on his own. I got out in front so I could stop him. Again, I'll take two wraps around my saddle. My latigo goes two times around. And when I start cinching, I'll bring him around here so you can see. When I go to cinch in here, I put my hand against him and I'll very softly pull that latigo up. If he wants to move, I'll just step out of his way and kind of cinch him as he's walking. Now, if he gets scared and bucks or runs off with the two wraps, there's enough friction on here without getting this buckle hooked in there it still would, the saddle probably still wouldn't fall off. This colt has a real nice set of withers, which I like in a good coder horse colt. Good withers, keeps the saddle on without having to have it so tight. I don't have to have this saddle too tight, hardly, hardly tight at all, and it stays on this colt. If he's round backed or doesn't have much withers developed, I'm gonna have to over cinch this colt and he's gonna get sensitive to the saddle. All right, we've got the saddle on, everything looks pretty good. I'll make sure everything is buckled and hooked when I think everything is okay, I'm gonna very gently move right out in front of him here. Now I'm gonna be careful. If he was to blow up and buck here from this first saddling, I wanna make sure I'm out of his way. I can be out of his way. So I'll, I'll step back and I'll have his head going off one direction. So if he did get scared and had to go, I won't get run over. I'm on the balls of my feet. I'm doing a lot of backing. If I need to, I can do something here to kind of help him. And he's, he's gonna be fine. I'm gonna check my cinch one more time. It looks okay. Not over tight, not under tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this halter off and we'll let him do what he needs to do here. When I turn him loose, I'll just step out of his way. But I'll be careful that if he would get in trouble, he wouldn't jump over the top of me. And I'll just let him kind of follow me around here. I like to be in front of him rather than behind him. If he was to get afraid or something, I could do something like this to change his mind. And that's what we're trying to do, change his mind from bucking if he's wanting to buck. I'll grab my lariat rope and we'll just see how he's gonna react here. He might wanna roll, you never know what a horse is gonna do when he gets saddled the first time. But I'll just, I'll just see what, what he wants to do here. We'll just kind of, now I'm driving him. I haven't driven him yet. I'm just 
just teaching him to drive here. And I'm in a position, I'm not in behind him. I'm off to the side where he can see me with his eye, but I can also drive with my rope. It's like a triangle right here. Now I'll ask him to trot. I just want him to think about trotting here. Good. And as soon as he trots, I'll back off. Again, my left hand, if I'm going to the right, my left hand is holding the rope. My right hand is guiding his eye. Now I'll just push, push, push. As soon as he's thinking about trotting, I'll quit slapping my leg. Now I'll just back off. And Beanie doesn't want to go much anyway. It doesn't take very much to get him to stop. I'll let him check that halter out. Now I'm going to switch my hand on my rope. My right hand has my rope. We're going to go to the left of the pen. So here I'll, I'll just send him off that way with my left hand. It's a guiding hand. My right hand will ask him to go. He wants to walk out real nice. Now the right hand. So we'll do a lot of upward and downward transitions in here. Now there I, I, I was late. I should have been in the right spot here to stop that. I'll send him across. Right here is a good thing, switching eyes. Right eye to the left eye. He had to lose me just for a second. Okay, now we'll switch across the other way. I'll ask him to go to his right. Left eye, switch to the right eye. Now here, I'll step over here and just ask him to go forward. The rope has influenced his upward transitions. My position is influencing his downward transitions. Step forward, the horse slows down or stops. Step back, horse should go forward. But we wanna do these things in a way that we don't scare the horse. I don't wanna to use too much rope. I wanna do just enough where he can think his way. Now right here, as I ask him to go, I'll, I'll see how much it takes. I'll do a little, increase it, increase it, slow it down. You don't want to just start out slapping your leg. It could spook the horse. He doesn't learn. He reacts to that rather than thinking through the situation. I'm going to go ahead and use my rope here just a little bit. Now this is a place where I think it's an advantage to be able to use a rope. Roping a horse can be a real nice thing or a real bad thing. But I'll just swing my rope, get him used to my rope. We'll just see if he can get used to the rope there. And you see it makes it easier for him to go just by swinging that rope. And I'm just going to drop it over the back of my saddle. And I'm just going to let that rope, I'm going to use that rope to kind of ask him to move forward. Good. That's just fine. So then I don't have to scare him. I can use pressure, the pressure of my rope, to get him to move out. Good. Now I'll see if I can, I want him to stop straight. I don't want him to hook on. Where I used to have the horse come to me, I don't want to do that anymore. I want him just to stop straight. He's real gentle anyway. He doesn't need to. It would, it would be against what we're trying to do here. We'll go the other direction. So I'll switch hands on my rope. You could, we'll let him turn away. And now I'll just swing my rope this direction. And he, he doesn't seem too concerned about the rope. I'll just lay it out there. Just let him learn to wear that rope. Take it off. Now right there, some of those kind of things, if he's wanting to blow up and buck, he'd have done it there. So you can kind of get a preview of what the ride's gonna be. And I, you wouldn't have to catch anything. You can just throw this rope over the saddle, just like I did there. You don't have to catch. But you don't want to scare him when it's coming on. So if I had an extension cord or a lunge line or something, I wouldn't want to scare him. I would, before I threw the rope, I'd want to make sure that, that he wasn't too scared. And then I'd throw the rope or my extension cord or, or uh, the lunge line or whatever you're using. With that halter in the middle, I just got to make sure I don't hang my rope up on it. I'll ask him a little pressure there. With my rope, I'll use my right hand for that. Just ask him to trot from that pressure. Just ask him to move out with that. I can use however much pressure I need. And then I can just simply step forward, slow the horse down. We'll do that again. I'll ask him to trot, trot. I'm asking him to trot with my rope. 
ask him to trot, and when I want him to slow down, I just step forward. Step in front of my saddle horn, he should stop. When you go against the flow or go with the, against the saddle horn, he should go. When I walk forward here with the horse, walk forward, should slow him down or stop him. If I want to draw his mind to me, if I say, look at me, I'll just, I'll just get his mind. I might use the coils. I'll get his, his eye on me, get his ears looking at me. And I'll just simply step back and draw his mind to me if I can. I might have to put my rope on his neck. There, I'll just ask him to look across at me. Good. And that's how I draw him to me. I don't want to do it where I scare the horse and make him run around and around and around and then take the pressure off. I'd like to be able to just draw that mind without getting him to be afraid of me. I don't want the horse afraid of me. And nothing I do, I'll try, everything I do, I try to get it where the horse is not afraid of me, but thinks I am the answer to his fears. Good. Well, he looks pretty nice. Now here, I'll see if he'll just look at me again. There's, I knew the opportunity was coming where he's gonna have his mind on me. I, I just drew the pressure off and you can see his ears come forward and now I'll get, I'll get where he's gonna go and I'll just keep drawing him to me. His mind is already on that halter. So I'm just gonna get where his mind is going and keep drawing it to me. Now this is a real low stress way of bringing the horse's mind to you. Rather, I used to do this. I'd throw things at the horse and I'd scare him and I'd get him running around this round pen. And then he'd get tired or, or he'd start looking for ways out. At first he thought about jumping out. He figured out he couldn't jump out. So as soon as he looked at me to get out of the pressure, I'd take the pressure off. And that was really, it really satisfied me at first. But then I, it was, it was uh, he had no other choice. It was either love me or, or die, kind of. I was putting too much pressure on. And with this, what I'm learning to do is wait for these opportunities where the horse can, now I'll see, I want him to look at it. He's looking over there to his, to his left here, and I'll just see if I can do something and bring those ears forward to me. And I'll have to coil my rope, do something to draw those ears, just like that. Now that's hooking on. That's bringing his mind to me. Now the place where you might have to use that aggressive approach, putting quite a bit of pressure going around, is a horse that has never been halter broke. That way you can, you can use that, but you don't have to put near as much pressure as most people do. You can use that to get the horse where he comes to you without having to have him halter broke. Okay. Now here's another thing I like to do with my lariat rope or a halter in a lunge line or anything like that. You can, you can either rope the horse or if you can't rope, you just simply put the rope or snap the lunge line on, put it around his neck, and then just send him away. Just let him learn to go away. You can just drive him off and I'll let him learn to wear this rope there. We'll see how he reacts to that. Now the rope's around his hind quarters. Some horses would have a lot of trouble with this. Now I'm gonna let him think his way out of this situation. He wants to come to me, but I want him to, to follow the feel of the rope. And I'll just let him work his way out of that. And now he'll come back to me and I'll just see how little pressure it takes to get the horse to think coming to me. Good, and now when he's starting, I'll just, I'll just let him come right to me. I'll draw him to me with that rope. And this is how to make a horse a lot easier to catch. Good. Now we'll just walk off over here. Let the horse follow us. I'll let him stop. See, he's thinking about not running me over. He's, he's just going ahead and stopping. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this rope on the offside. And I'll just see if I can get him to stay there. Now what he's going to want to do is turn to me. But my rope's going to say, no, you got to think your way out of this. So turn Turn away from me, is what I'm telling him. You're gonna have to turn away, follow the feel of that rope, and now think your way back to me. So this is teaching the horse, this is the kindergarten, this is the thinking part of the deal. He's learning to learn here. Learning how to come to a draw and go away from pressure. Real nice. Now, if you do like to rope, and you can't handle a rope, you can also rope your horse around the neck. And I'll kind of demonstrate how I like to do that. There's the one thing you want to remember 
when the rope comes on the horse, it should always come from the tail forward. So here, in this direction here, I'd have to, if I'm roping right-handed, I have to swing in this direction. This is the hula hand swing. And when I throw it on here, as I get ready to throw it, it would come on from his tail forward. And then he, he, it comes on in a way it doesn't scare him or make him jump, want to jump out of the round pen. That's called a hula hand swing. And now I can just draw the horse to me. And I'll just coil as I go here. I'm trying to bring him forward real soft. I'm teaching him to lead better and learn to get the release of that pressure as I bring him to me. Good. Now I'll be real soft when I take it off. He'll get his relief here. And now I'll, I'll rope him, I'll rope him from the, from the, going to the left here. I'll send him off this way. And I want, I'll rope him, if he's going the other direction, if he's going from right to left in the round pin, we'd swing our rope in the normal fashion, just an overhand swing. Now I gotta, Kind of accidentally got a front leg in there, but I won't let that bother me. I'll just, I'll just see, we'll just use that to our advantage. He can get used to that rope around his leg. This will be a good thing. And I'll let him think his way out of that. Good. Now I'll see if we can bring him forward with that. This is going to take a real, real softness here. I can't put too much pressure on him. See, he knows this is a good thing. He'll learn how to get out of that pressure by coming to me. So even though it wasn't the greatest deal in the world. It might have turned out to be a real good thing because he learned that I'm going to be the guy that's going to help him out of these positions, these situations. And I'll just take that rope off. And here's a spot where it's a nice place to take and put that rope on that front foot. And I'll just use this to, to let him learn how to accept the pressure on that, that foot. And I'll try to teach him to lead by that foot. I'll wait. I, will, uh, I want him to put the weight on that front foot. He doesn't understand here. I want, him to, I want him to come forward and put the weight on that front foot. He's learning to accept that pressure. Good, just like that. Now he should bring his other feet forward to catch up with that foot. Just bring it forward. There, just like that. Very good. Good. So the rope can be a real positive thing. Or if you don't go about it right, it could be a real negative thing that could have an effect on your horse for the rest of his life. So you gotta be real careful when you're using a rope or anything that could scare the horse to use it in a common sense manner. And it doesn't hurt to just stop and rub and pet on these guys a little bit. I think that's enough with the rope. Very nice. That, that's what I want. Where he understands that just coming with me is a place to be. And that, that'll bring us to another subject. I hear a lot of talk on the predator-prey relationship of a horse, or the alpha mare, and all these things. I don't think, I try never to put that thought in my thought process. I don't think the human is a predator unless he loses control of his emotions or doesn't understand. And that's the thing I think we're trying to do as a horseman is become understanding enough not to scare our horse or to get the most out of our horse. So by thinking of a predator-prey relationship as maybe a mountain lion and a horse would have, I think that's the wrong approach. The horse he doesn't have to think we're a predator. Matter of fact, he can think we're a protection from a predator. So I would, I would never, ever do anything as a predator. That's what I'm trying to teach my, myself as becoming a better horseman. Never become a predator of the horse. Always become an escape from the predator. And right, this kind of cult starting, I think, is what this is all about. No predator at all. Everything I do is about getting the animal to trust me and anytime you put a suspicion in there where you make him scared and then have him trust you, that fear is always in there. Well, I think the horse is ready to ride. I think he's ready to ride. We're gonna go see. So as I catch him, 
we're uh, we're getting prepared for the next step, which is the riding of the horse. <laughs> Okay, when I get him caught, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rope back on my saddle. Now the reason I'll do that is, and when I go to grab my rope, I'll make sure that I don't get run over here. But the reason I want to put my rope on my saddle is uh, it kind of serves as a handhold for me. So this is called an Oregon crossover rope strap. And what I'll do here is it just takes about three or four wraps around my rope is I bring my Oregon crossover rope strap in through my night latch, which the night latch is, is for, it's the same purpose, it's holding on the other side. I can hold on just like this. And when you hold on like this, rather than this onto the saddle horn, it pulls you into the saddle. When you hold on to the saddle horn, it pops you out of the saddle sometimes. So I can hold on there or there, either side. I can have either hand taking hold and helping my horse uh, to, to keep from getting in trouble with the other hand. My saddle doesn't have any swells, so I need something else to kind of help hold me on there. All right, well, everything looks pretty good here. So I'll move him around just a little bit more. Not so much to move him around, but just to make sure he's light on the halter rope. I want him to be able to follow the feel on that halter rope. I want to make sure, I'm just double checking things now. I want to make sure that when I pick up on this halter rope, it slows his front feet down. I want to be sure that I can just push a little bit back on the halter rope and it steps him back. He's real responsive here to the halter rope. It's real nice. So we'll see if he's ready to get on. And I'm not saying I'm going to get on. All I'm doing now is checking him out to make sure that he is ready to get on. I think he is. But when you start to get on, it'll tell you if he is. And the way I get on here, it'll tell me if I should do some more groundwork or if it's time to get on. So when I get ready to get on, I'll, I'll uh, fold my halter rope over, I'll put it over his neck. I'm not going to tie it, I'm going to leave it loose. And when I go to, st first thing I want to do is make sure his feet are square, where he's got a good solid base to hold my weight. Second thing is I'll start in front of his shoulder, my left hand is touching his neck, my right hand will just reach and grab this stirrup. Now when I reach up, I want to make, make sure I'm nice and balanced here. My right foot is going to bear my weight. I put my weight of my foot just in the ball of my feet. I don't run my foot too far in that stirrup in case I have to get it out real quick. I'll set it up in here, and now I'm just going to very gently, now I'm going to work my way back this way, and he decides to leave, and I'll just keep working to get him squared up and stopped, and I'll get in as close as I can right here. So he can, and I'll keep his head straight where it makes it hard for his right front foot to walk off. I'm actually pushing the weight over on his right. See, then he moved his left. So I gotta balance out his front end to keep him still. I have a hold of the back of my saddle and the front of my, uh, his, his neck, his mane. And I'll just kind of move around here a little bit. See if he'll stay. He, he wants to move. And I'll just keep getting him ready. I'll let him balance here, wait, when he kind of lets his breath out and thinks about staying, then I'm going to take my foot out of the stirrup real easily and just step him forward a step. And this is preparing him for when I get my leg on each side of him so he can walk off real easy. I want to make sure that he understands when I'm up beside him, there's no trouble in moving off. Again, we'll just square those feet up. I like to take plenty of time here getting on. Square the feet up. Step in here. Now he's kind of, he kind of knows that something's different here. So he starts preparing to leave too. Now I'll just work my way around here and I'll just try to keep him, keep him squared up. When I step up here, I'll just step up and I'll, I'll just work it keeping his head in place. I'm, I'm kind of laying across my saddle where I'm not pulling him off his feet. There, when he gets still, I'll, I'll stay as close as I can. When I feel like he's all right, I'll step down and immediately lead him forward. Now here's, this is a good place to see how your horse is gonna react. If I step halfway up there, step down and lead him forward, as he was thinking about bucking right there, he might've broken two and buck right there. 
So I'll do this a few times, up and then down. Good. We'll square him up, fold this over, put it over his neck where I'm real organized. Hand here, reach, grab, make sure he's going to stay nice and balanced on my right foot. I got to be able to be where I don't have to lean against the horse. Just enough foot to, to, to take my weight. Now I'm getting a little faster about my process here. I'll square him up. I'll step up. And now this time when I step on, I step on real balanced. And I'll just try to stay right over him where I'm not pulling him off his feet. And my hand can pick up on this halter rope. I'm in a position. You see I have him holding my rope. If he is going to buck or suck back or jump sideways, my feet are wide enough where I can block this way, left and right. This hand holds me in from going forward, and this hand out here, if he goes back, I can push back on it. So I'm blocked every direction. And now I see his ears go forward, so I can kind of position myself in my saddle, and I can relax just a little bit. My chest is right over my saddle horn here, and I try to keep the buttons of my vest in line with his neck. So I don't pull him off his feet sideways. Just like if you watch professional bull riders, right before they nod their head out of the chute, this is where I want to be when I'm on a colt the first few rides, or first few moments when I get on. And now he, he feels pretty good. I'll pet him a little bit, but I'll keep my hand in a position where if I need to, I can get to a position where I can ride, just like that. Now I only have my halter rope on one side. I could have tied it around, but I wanted to be able to step down and lead him forward. When I ask him to go here, I'm not going to kick him with my legs. I'm going to try to just stay up towards the front of my saddle where it's easy for his hind feet to go, and I'm simply going to lead him off his back. I want his right foot or his left foot, I don't care which, but I'll, I think his right foot should come forward. I'll bring his head to the left, and, and hopefully his right front foot will step forward just like that. We'll just ask him to step on forward. If he wants to go a little ways, great. If he doesn't want to, I'll just take one step. Let him regroup his thoughts. Again, I'll ask him to step forward there. His feet moved off a lot nicer that time. Good. Now his, his right ear went forward, but his left ear is still back. I'll bring him to the left here. I'm just going to lead him off his back. I just want to make a, a few steps here. He doesn't seem like he's getting in trouble. And before he goes too far, I'll just lift on my halter rope. Lift, lift. I'm just going to try to stop those front feet. And as soon as he's going to stop, I'll release. With all my groundwork before, that's what caused him just to stop. I don't pull back. If you pull back this way, he's going to push into your halter rope and he's going to walk on through it. Okay, now I'm going to throw my halter rope across and quickly reach up and grab it with this hand. And we'll just ask him to step across this way. My, my left hand is in my night latch. Now he feels a lot freer going this way to the right. He feels like he can walk off pretty good. And I'm just kind of letting him move. If he got scared and act like he wanted to buck or, or take off, I would try, before he got going, I'd try to just lift up and change his mind. If I couldn't, I'd just hang on, because you're not gonna change his mind anyway. That's where you just gotta go with it. And this is the point where you wonder if you should be on a colt or not. And if you're wondering if you should or not, you probably shouldn't be, because you never know what's gonna happen. You gotta be a good enough rider that you can ride a horse that goes pretty fast and might even pitch. He looks real good. His ears are forward. He's not too bothered here. Now I have my hand on my rope strap, so if he does get scared, I can concentrate on hanging on there, and my other hand will be concentrating on talking him out of bucking. I could even, I could even use the end of my rope here like a dressage whip and just tap him just a little bit to try to get him to trot here. I'll just ask him. I'm just going to keep working and working. As soon as he trots, I'll back off here. And that'll happen a lot of times with these colts. They don't understand this added weight on there and they'll stumble. He didn't want to trot anyway, so he kind of stumbled. And you notice when he did, I got way back so he could get his front feet up underneath him again. Now we'll let him think about that. That might have scared him a little bit. That might not have been too good of a deal. But that happened, so we'll just go with it. Now I'll ask him. Now you notice when I put my rope on the right side, he just started to walk off. He's starting to understand that feel. I'll ask him to lead across here. And I want him to keep moving out. Now I'll just use my halter rope just slightly on that side. I'm going to see if I can get him to go to the left here. And I'll just lead him around. And as he comes around here, I'm going to just ask him to go with my left hand. The hand on the inside, the way he's turning, that's the hand I use. 
When I'm ready to go the other direction, I'll simply throw my halter rope with my left hand if it's on the left side and catch with the right hand. Now I'll lead him to the right. With my arms straight, I'm leading him off his back. His hind feet follow his front feet. I get the front feet out of the way so his hind feet will follow. This way I don't have to use my legs. If I use my legs, his hind feet are going to move and the front feet are going to get balled up in the way and then he'll have to move them too fast. In this way, I move his front feet. I move his front feet. His left foot should go. His left front should go. And then his hind feet follow the front feet. We'll try to move his right front. Here I'll ask, I'm just putting the weight over, shifting on his left. I'm going to ask his right foot to go. Good. And this is the, the small amount of groundwork that I've done. That's what this has done. And then when the horse's front feet move, the hind feet want to follow. Now here, I'm, I'm starting to try to get him to move around this pen. He's starting to feel more comfortable. And I'm, I'm doing more with my hand here. I, I'm doing this kind of stuff where I touch him and go. And I'm just trying to send him forward here. And we'll see if we can just liven him up to a trot. I'll maybe do a little bit here. I'm ready. If he gets in trouble, I can, I can grab with my night latch here. Okay, now I'll just ask him to lead across this way. And now my hand's back here. I'll slap my shaft leg. I'll do some things just to encourage some movement without using my legs. Good. I'll let him trot just a little bit and then come back to the walk. We'll ask him to lead off. Lead off. And then I use my hand on the right side. I don't use the hand on the off side because that'll draw him away from the turn. If you're going around your round pin to the right, you should do ask things to the inside or you'll cause your horse to turn into the round pin. Good, now we'll just, we'll let him move here a little bit. Now I want him to, he's not wanting to go too much here. He doesn't want to move out too much. So I'll just, I'll just ask him to stop and I'll let him sit and relax for a minute. I think he's ready to back up. His body feels like he's ready to back up. So I'll just simply put my halter where it was on the ground. He's gonna look at those other horses out in the pasture. Now I'll just, when he gets ready, I'll prepare him to step back. It's, I'm not asking him to back up right now. I'm trying to get him ready to back up and I'll just wait, I'll just prepare. And when he's ready, that's when I lift my hand and ask his front feet to step back. But he wasn't ready so it's hard to explain this, but I'm not, I'm not asking him to back here. I'm asking him to get ready to back. When he's ready to back, that's when I ask, add, add the pressure on. His mind is one place at a time. If his mind is forward and I ask him to back, he's liable to walk forward. So I'm trying to change his mind. I'm saying, let's try this. We'll put this halter rope down around here and catch it. And I'll say, now, maybe this will help you to get your mind going backwards. There. And then I'll ask him to step back. Ask him to step back. But until he's ready to step back, I don't ask. I prepare him to back, and then I ask him. Change his mind, and then ask him to do it. We'll get him to look to the left here. Good. We'll ask him to look to the right. Very softly. Now here, if I go too much farther than that, he's gonna walk off. So I just want him to look across this way. I wanna see his eyelash and his nostril. Again, I'll just get, and this is the same thing I was doing when I was leading him. And now he can maybe even move his front end across. He's, he feels like he's ready to move his front end across to the left. So I'll just pick him up, pick up, pick up, step that left foot out. Good. Now let's see if we can bring his right foot across. I'll just pick his right foot up if I can. Now he's a little bit forward. I'll have to bring back, come back just a little. Bring that right foot. Good. Perfect. Nice. And that's what getting to the feet, slowing your groundwork down, and contacting the feet through the halter rope. Now let's bring his right front end, his front end across to the right. I'll change his mind. He's looking forward. He's thinking somewhere else. I'll change his mind, change his mind. Now I can ask back here. I can ask him to step back this way. Step back. I'm saying just step back and across here. Back and across. Didn't make it. That's all right. Now he can. I don't know if he will, but now he's in a position to do it. Straighten him out. Shift his weight. He, he's just bending too much. It wouldn't be easy for him to go, I'll, I'll go the other direction. I'll ask him to look off this way. Good, there it works for him. So I just had to re, readjust my situation here. Now we'll see if we can bring his front end across here. Change his mind, change his mind, shift his weight, shift his weight. Now we'll ask him to come across. I'm just gonna try to get his body positioned here. 
He just doesn't understand what I'm asking. And he's bent too much. It'll cause his hindquarters. If I can get his hindquarters to move across here, I'll just I'll just say, come on, move your hindquarters over a little bit there. Now his front end should be able to come across. Lift, lift, bring his front end across. Good. So he just wasn't in a position to do what I was asking him to do. And if I'm too demanding and ask him to do it right at that minute, I'll ask him to do something or I'll teach him to do it wrong. And I think that's really important when you're starting a cult to understand that you can't always ask for what you want. You got to get what you want set up first, then ask for it. Here, if I want his front end to come across, now his front end is ready to come across. Didn't make it. I'll set it up. Now he should be able to step that left foot out and back, just like that. Good. Okay. I'll get my rope down, and that'll help us get a little movement. And we'll also get the colt used to the rope. Now, when I take my rope down, I'm very careful not to scare him. Because if I scare him with the rope when I'm taking it off, it'll take a lot more time to get him used to the rope. So I keep it in close to his body, right by his, my, my saddle horn, and I'll just rub him up and down the neck. I'll switch sides. I'll rub him up and down the neck here. If he stops his feet, that's okay. I'll move it back. I'll move it forward, back and forward. When I want him to go, I might just tap him with it a little bit, just enough to get some movement. He already understands that the rope's not a bad thing, so it makes it real easy to get him used to the rope up here. Now, the rope will help him to be able to move, to go, without me using my legs, which would scare him or get him dull about my legs. Good, so I'll use my rope. I'll guide him with my rope. I'll just send him off over here. I'll tell him to go to the left with my rope. I'll push, 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 and release it. I'll switch sides here. Good. When the horse is going to the left, I use the rope on the left side. It keeps his mind bent to the middle. He's real good about the rope here. Switch it over here. No problem. See if he can just go off that way. I'll try to drive him with the rope. I'll tell him just to go away from that rope. Go away from the rope. Don't hit him with it. Just get him to go away from it. Then I'll switch it over here. It should draw his eye back this way. Didn't make it. There, there, I'll push. He's wanting to go to the left here, so I'll just keep pushing. Keep pushing with that rope, good. Now I'll switch here and it should draw him to the right. We'll let him stop, just by stopping my riding. Just stopped riding, he stopped. I'll build a loop and I'll try to build my loop in a way that doesn't scare him, get him afraid of this rope, good. Now I'll just see if I can't just put my loop over his hind quarters which should cause him to want to go. And I'll just, I'll just get him used to that around his leg, which he's already used to anyway, just maybe not with me on his back. That's just fine. I'll see if I can put his foot in it. I'll just cause his foot to step up in there. And as he picks that up, I'll try to, if he goes against the fence, I'll just be careful he doesn't kick the fence. Switch sides there, that might be a little dangerous. Now we'll watch his reaction when that rope comes up. We'll see what he does there. I don't want to pull the rope there, it'd scare him. But there I can bring it out of his sight. If I just keep trying not to scare him about this rope. I'll put my, uh, I'll build a loop again. He's getting better about the loop. And right there when he's been around to me, I'll just drop that over his nose so he can see that rope coming out there. I try to be real smooth with my rope, and if, if I wasn't pretty smooth with my rope, like right there, I could cause some real trouble, get him where he's head shy about the rope. So I'll try to really be easy when I do these things. I don't mind the rope going up around his head and going over the top, bringing it back off, bringing it on from this way. That isn't too smooth, but he can take it. Good. Now I should be able to swing my rope. I'll just swing it here first. Just that much, he doesn't even see it coming. Now I'll go one time around, put it down, one time around this way, doesn't bother him a bit. Good. And that's again the preparation before we ever got on. If he wants to move, I'll just go with him. If he was gonna scare him, I'd, I'd get it in close. We'll drop that in behind, I'll coil my rope up.
I think he's pretty good about the rope. So as we uh, we're getting close to the end of our ride here, he's had about enough. This is a good day's lesson. I'll, I'll just review. We'll go through some of the things I'd like to have a horse after he's good and gentle and not afraid. I want him willing to move. We'll work on this here just a second. So the main things I want when I'm riding these colts, the first, first ride is I want upward transitions from the walk to the trot and to the lope if we need to. But this round pen's a little slick today, so I don't have to lope. I want him to be able to go, go somewhere. That's the first thing, go from point A to point B. Second thing is, when I get moving here, I want to be able to slow him down and stop him. Downward transitions. The next thing I want to have going is being able to move the hindquarters to the left and the right. So here, I can just bring his head around and just get the hindquarters stepping across to the right. And then we want the front end to be able to come across to the left or the right. So here he's set up, I'll just ask his front end to step across. Just bring that front end across. I'll just wait. There he's set. Now that left foot should step out and back. He's thinking forward. That's all right. Now he should be able to shift the front end across. Just like that. That's enough. I don't want to do too much. Okay, now I'll bring him off across this way. And I'll, I'll just get him moving out just enough to where I'll bring this halter rope on on this side so I can ask him to go a little bit. Now we've got enough life. He's kind of forward. I'll take the hind quarters to the left. And I just want the hind quarters to step across just like that. Now I want to shift the weight back. When the hind quarters step that way, when the hind quarters move, the weight is forward. When the front end moves, you got to shift the weight back. You got to be able to shift the weight back and step the front end across. I'll, I'll wait. When it's ready to go, I'll ask for it. I'm just trying to set it up. There, now his front end should step across. Just like that. One more. I'm leading him across here. Leading him across. I got him a little bit too much on his front end. It's causing him to bend too much. Hind quarters will get out of the way. Now the front end can step across. Just like that. Good. And I'll just wait it out. That's real nice. We'll see if he'll step back. And again, I can throw my halter rope under here and catch and help him to step back. And I'll just lift, not pull back, but lift up which should cause him to step back. Once we get that real nice, I'll see if I can get him to step back again with just the halter rope. I, I gotta do very little or else he'll, he'll bend to me. Good, very good. So I think that's, uh, that's a pretty nice first ride. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. The horse where he doesn't have to get scared, doesn't buck, or when we're done with the, uh, the ride, the first ride, he's calm and relaxed, can get still and set here. I can wave at my neighbors when they're going by. I can touch him all over. I can rub and pet on him. Anywhere on his body, it doesn't seem to bother him. I can, I can put this rope over and not have him react to that. Now when I get ready to get off here, I'll make sure everything is kind of right. His attitude, my attitude, my equipment. So when I step off, I don't want to undo what I've already done here. So when I step off, I'm gonna get my rope out of the way, this foot, and, and I'll get off where I don't pull him off his feet, real balanced, as if I didn't have my cinch cinched up. I'll get my foot on the ground, and you can see that he's almost asleep when we step off, and that's just the way we want him. There's no sweat started up, there's no panting. He's, he's probably calmer, or as calm now as when we started, and that's the way I think the first ride should always, you should always try to get the first ride that way. Doesn't always happen, but that's what we're looking for. Through my past experience with working with horses, watching other people, experimenting and trying things myself, and just from the all around knowledge you get from riding lots of different horses, I've come up with a few things that I think is real helpful to achieve low stress horsemanship as well as high performance. The first one being the predator-prey relationship. I hear about this a lot. And the way I look at it is a horse and a human have a much different relationship than a mountain lion and a horse. Horses and mountain lions, they only think of eating and sleeping. The human, we have a higher agenda on there, and we should be able to control our emotions and never become a predator. So I try not to think predator prey. A real important thing to remember 
is to teach your horse to accept pressure. And when the horse learns to accept pressure, he learns to think his way out of the pressure. When he reacts to pressure, he doesn't learn from it, and that's when we have repetition that takes effect. If we get our horses to learn to take pressure, learn to accept pressure, it'll shorten your training time and be a lot less stressful to the horse. When you're working with your horse, it's real important to achieve the mental balance. Get the horse relaxed in a mental learning frame of mind before you try to get the physical things happening. So it's always mental balance first. Get the mental balance first and then ask for the physical. Relax, prepare, move. When I watch people work with horses, one of the things I notice that they do a lot is over bend the horse in my opinion. I'm not against bending or flexing the horse, but when we overdo it, the horse gets dull and he doesn't respond to our feel as much as he could have. What I'd rather think of first is the balance, mentally, physically, and then have that achieve my movement from the horse. When your horse gets nervous or bothered, or in a kind of an up frame of mind, the best thing the rider can do is instead of making him work harder or put more pressure on the horse, is to do everything he can to relax the horse and get him back to that thinking frame of mind. I like groundwork, I believe in groundwork, but I think the less we have to do, the more natural our horse stays. When we're on his back, we can keep him pretty natural. We have to do enough groundwork to get him where he's safe to ride and understands what we're asking. But as soon as we can safely get on his back, I think that's where the real performance from the horse comes from. Whatever I'm doing with my horse, whether I'm loading him in a trailer, putting a saddle on him, working him in the round pen, performing on him, or just working on the ranch, I try to use as little equipment as I possibly can. I try to use my mind, his mind, and the physical parts of the horse to achieve my goals through the horsemanship. When working with a young horse, or any horse for that matter, I think it's real important for the handler to learn the real basic aspects of horsemanship. And the places to do that is, how good are you at catching a horse? Are you real good, get, good at catching a hard to catch horse? Can you catch a horse out in a big pasture? Can you saddle a horse untied? Can you mount him without having to move off? All these basic horsemanship aspects are real good and they need to be achieved before you can reach a higher level horsemanship. Anytime you're riding your horse, in the arena, outside, in the round pen, in the mountains, in the desert, you need to have that horse safe. And you've got to know that there are certain times when you have to have a safety stop, whether it be the one rein stop, which works well in an arena or on the flat ground, or some other means of getting the horse stopped. You have to be able to control the forward movement of the horse, or he's probably not safe for your riding abilities. When you're trying to elevate your horsemanship to its highest level, I think it's real important to learn how to use self-control, whether that be through patience, waiting for the right thing to happen, or just taking the necessary time and effort that it takes to achieve your horsemanship goals. That's a real important thing to try to do. Uh, low stress horsemanship, I think what it is, there's two different kinds of stress. There's a real high level of stress. High stress is, say I put a horse in the round pen and just started chasing it and scaring it and it was wanting to jump out of the pen and pretty soon it was hitting the fence and what happens there is, is when you stress an animal or scare them real bad, they're either thinking or they're reacting. When an animal goes into the reaction mode, the brain switches, switches sides, it goes from thinking to reaction. When that happens, there's a signal that comes from the brain to the pituitary gland. When the pituitary gland hits, then it releases adrenaline into the bloodstream. When that happens to an, an, uh, an animal that runs away from things, all the blood vessels in the, in the outer limbs, the legs, they expand, the lungs expand, and the heart expands. They need more oxygen, more blood. Everything else shrinks up so the animal can run. The other thing that happens when that happens is the immune system takes a lot of energy. And when, that, when, the, when the animal's in the flight mode, the immune system shuts down because it'll save energy and there's no use fighting a cold or fighting a flu when a mountain lion's gonna kill you. 
So they're thinking all their energy is used, the, the, the mental, the body, all the energy is used to get away. When that happens, there's all kinds of pathogens and bad things in our body. When that happens, when the immune system, system shuts down, all those bad things attack. And that's when we get West Nile virus, that's when we get a bad cold, the flu, all those bad things that our horses can get happens when the immune system shuts down. That's the high level stress thing. The low level stress thing is, is the everyday things in their environment that, that causes the weaving, causes the pawing, causes all these bad stall vices. There's something in that horse's environment that causes it to have to deal with that stress. And that's the low level stress that, that really affects the performance and the longevity of the horse. So I think it's very, very important to keep both of those, the high level stresses and the low level stresses out of the horse. Yeah, it's for humans too. Mm -hmm. What I want to give to people when they come to a, a demonstration or to watch me either start a colt or work cattle or, or horsemanship is uh, the main thing I'm thinking is it, performance isn't the only thing. It's what we're doing to the animal mental, mentally and physically. And I think there's so much sickness and so much disease and so much mental problems in our horses because of the human only thinking of themselves and what they want and not understanding what the horse needs to do to change to fit the human's world. So what I want people to learn is the ability to think, not to do what everybody else is doing. And the other thing is, is just to have fun. This is not so serious that we can't have some fun. When we start having fun, the horses will start having fun and then the performance and the stress level. The performance level will go up, the stress level will go down. The reason I like the American Quarter Horse is the way it's built. And uh, I, like, I like the trainability of them, their mental attitude is real good, but the reason I like the horse for my work is mainly is because of the way he's built. And the quarter horse, his, his hind end, his back end is tipped under more than most horses. And when a horse is collected, it means his pelvis is tipped under. When a horse that isn't built like the quarter horse or some of this, a horse of that way, he has to physically change his body. But the quarter horse is almost born collected and almost born ready to run in a fast way. If we're gonna rope something or run the barrels or go over a jump or whatever. That's what I like about the quarter horse so much. His hind quarters are tipped under where he has all that power in his hind end. Yet his withers and his front end is developed so it gets out of the way of the back end. So that's my reason for the quarter horse. Their trainability, their mental attitude as we see with the horses that we work is real easy to work with them and the physical build of the horse.